Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Visual Effects Artist React. We have a very special episode here. It's actually just me with two guests this time. <laughs> I'm joined by David Goyer and Chris McLean. David is the showrunner on Foundation. He's also written a bunch of movies that you've probably heard of. Works on the Dark Knight trilogy, Man of Steel, the Blade movies. But Foundation is definitely one of the big feathers in my cap. It's something that I always thought about working on. And Chris has done visual effects on a whole bunch of incredible projects. Plus, is the visual effects supervisor on Foundation. It's been four years in the main and you know we're still going on it and it's been a wild ride and I'm very happy to be on the show. I love Foundation. We've actually talked about it in two other episodes. These guys saw the episode and thought it was cool enough that it's worth giving us a call <laughs> to come out to the couch. We're fans. We're fans <laughs> of Quarter Crew. Fans of the show. Aw, you're so nice. Sweet. Well, let's jump into it. If the Empire is good for anything, they can damn well build. So I want to congratulate you guys on making the first space elevator that I've seen that seems to be an accurate space elevator. Like it's pretty, tall enough. It's pretty, pretty accurate. It has the yeah. counterweight on the end. Pretty, yeah. well, we, still, we, che we cheated a little. Yeah, there is a bit of cheating, but we also had it too close in the beginning too because some of the concept art that Rory did had it like, you know, here's the counterweight, here's the planet. And we want to see them both in the same shot. And then we, we had to redesign some of the shots. We were we actually were working on an idea that had a space elevator in it a long time ago as well. You know, one of the things we're talking about is like, okay, what if the ending of the piece is like the space elevator gets like destroyed and falls down and wraps around wraps the planet? Wraps around the planet. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it yeah. leaves like a canyon when it yeah, does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and like seeing that happen in the show, it's like, oh, they did it. They did it. And like, it looks so cool. I f***ing love that shot. It's so cool. It was really hard to demonstrate the fact that there were all these different layers on Trantor, and that was one of the ones I remember when we were working with the team of like, I just kept talking about like, what's a frame that we can use to illustrate it like smashing through the sky, mm -hmm. you know, and that, that finally we sort of cracked it. But I think that part of our philosophy with the show in general is, you know, a couple times a season, do just a couple of really big ass sequences and just f go for it mm -hmm. and just do them right. Chris's fingerprints are all over the show in ways that extend beyond visual effects. Chris is also very close with Rory, our production designer. Rory and I, we kind of get together and go, okay, how much of this can you build? How much of this can you give us for real? How much of this are we going to actually have to do? And then we try to make it so that we don't have like a hundred set extensions to eat up the budget and then we can spend the money on the big shots. Otherwise it's you know, you would run out of money in the first two episodes. It's pick your moments, really. You know, and obviously this was a big moment. And if you do a big moment like this, it's sort of the shot that fires off the season, then you don't have to do another big moment like this for a little while. Wow, that's a really cool space elevator. I mean, it's supposed to go up and down and fluctuate from space to Earth. But you know what's not supposed to be constantly going up and down? Your mental health. That's why I'm here to talk about our sponsor today, BetterHelp. BetterHelp is the world's largest therapy service and it's 100% online. To quote Patty from the UFC, there's a stigma going on in this world where men are afraid to talk. You know, and I think that's a thing. It's an ego thing. You know, you got to get past that thing, but it's okay to talk about your mental health. If you're going through things, it's okay to lean on support. Whether that's friends or family, that's fine too. But if you don't have that support system around you, BetterHelp is a great tool and a great option that you might want to consider checking out. BetterHelp has over 30,000 licensed and professional experienced therapists who are there to help you with a wide range of issues. You just take a quick questionnaire, kind of explain kind of what your needs or what you're kind of looking to get out of therapy, and they'll help you match with the perfect person for you. If for any reason you're not gelling with your therapist or it's just not the right fit, you can switch at any time at no charge. My favorite part about BetterHelp is that it's the convenience factor. I can shoot a text or an email or even schedule a live session with my therapist at any time, uh, kind of whatever works for me. So if I even just have a thought and I'm like, ooh, why did that happen or why did I think that way? I can just shoot him a text uh, kind of with my issue or my question and he'll get back to me in a timely manner. Men, just start talking. Women too. It's a good tool. I use it personally. A few other people at Corridor use it personally. So if you want to check it out, go to betterhelp.com slash Corridor Crew or hit that link in the description below and you can get 10% off your first month. But in the meantime, let's get back to the couch because Nico's about to get clarification on that canoe shot that we were looking at before when we looked at Foundation. Okay. See, you, I love I that shot. I love that shot. It's this a great is, shot. I hate this <laughs> shot. <laughs> I 
I hate Whoa. this shot. <laughs> no I offense. No offense to the guys that did it, but we ran out of time. I hate that the pipes come out of nowhere. The pipes come out of yeah. nowhere. See, we were out of money here. And originally this was supposed to be three shots. Who, who, who was the vendor on this? I mean, it they was, did a great job. No, no, it's been, they, they did a great they job. They did a great right? job. It, the problem is it was supposed to happen in three shots. And look, I love Marvel movies. I've got three boys. We see all the Marvel movies, right? But I hate when certain shots just completely defy physics. That thing does not obey the laws of physics at all. Oh, kid. Oh, okay. And this one is just <laughs> such a bullshit physics shot. <laughs> and I'm, I, I just, uh, it kills me. It just hurts my soul. So this is part of that uh, 90% or 10%, yes. 10% that you don't like. Yeah, yeah, I heard you guys talking about this. And I was like, what the f are they talking about? <laughs> How do they like this shot? Well, th this is this is why we actually we wrote you guys. We were we were scouting for season three when yeah. we saw this, and we were like, "Yeah, oh, f we're watching this." Hey, yeah. <laughs> It's just a perfect magic trick shot. So in our previous episode where we were talking about the canoe shot, we were guessing as to how it was done. Yeah. Our guess was that like you guys just dropped the canoe to like kind of get that splash, and then like you did the actual shot with the canoe afterwards and mixed the two plates together. Is uh, that at all what you did? Uh, no, we did. <laughs> <laughs> the the uh, so the canister she throws in is uh, that's real. That's real. Then we do a, a CG swap over to you know the expansion of the canoe, and then the water sim is all digital. Like there's no there's no splash from the uh, there's from no the boat. splash from the actual canoe. Really, the yeah. only real splash is the first splash from her that canister. Yeah. Wow. The, but, I, and there's still some turbulence going on. Even when we're doing something kind of virtual like this, we try to add as many real elements as possible. The best visual effects are ones that combine real elements and fake elements. Yeah. If you look at how quickly we go back to it, which was the real canoe, it's kind of a sleight of hand because you, you're paying attention to this, the things start to unfold, there go the oars from nowhere, and then she looks, and then when we cut back to it, it's there. Yeah. You know, it's just a kind of sleight of hand, but it, because there was a real canoe there right after that shot, you kind of suspend disbelief a little bit more. Wow. So Bravo. It wasn't as elegant as you surmised. <laughs> <laughs> it's time you and I had a reckoning. Yeah, let's jump into season two. Let's, can we start with uh, episode one with the sure. uh, chopped head? This is a sweet fight scene. There's a lot of work that went into this. Yeah, fight choreography, <laughs> storyboards, Lee trained for at least three months. Physically training, but also no stunt doubles wow. in, this, in this scene. He, he was completely committed to it, did a spectacular job. You think you can breach my arm? That single eye on the sliced head that's yeah. looking at him when he lands yeah. next to it is really I great. just wish we had made the eye blink. <laughs> <laughs> we, I mean, the intention was to do that, and again, we just ran out of money. I think that in the first draft, her head was just cut off, and then we did some different iterations, or it was halfway, the top half was cut off, and then Chris did some concept art and we decided that the diagonal cut was more disturbing. Mm -hmm. And so we went for the diagonal cut. There's rig removal in these shots because there's a little uh, you know, pipe mm. across his chest that's pumping blood out. She was wearing a green sock, Lara Byrne, that plays Demerzel. Was it green sock or black. painted? No, black? we had black with uh, tracking markers on it. Just yeah. little, little tracking markers. To have her segmented head. And we wanted to kind of start the season off with a bang and let audiences know that we can do scenes like this on this show. It's not just a heady navel gazing science fiction show. Speaking of navels, his is missing. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, I guess that makes sense. Yeah, it? yeah, we, we painted it out in all of these. Because he's, yeah. he's a clone. He's a clone. And we, <laughs> he doesn't. For some reason they decided that they get fed through their necks instead of their uh, <laughs> belly buttons, but yeah, it's been a whole thing that we have to deal with now. I do a lot of asking of questions on the couch. It's kind of my job when I'm hosting this show. But I'm curious, if you were in my spot, what questions would you be asking? What am I missing here? What would you want to ask that I haven't asked? So leave a comment down below. Fill up my, my questions, inspirations box with, uh, with some new ideas here. So yeah, let me know what you guys would want to ask. Okay, this stuff. Oh my Ooh. God, we have to talk about this sequence. Yeah. We have to talk about this sequence. 
So <laughs> this is on an island called La Gomera. It's this incredible location. This is a natural pool where under normal circumstances, people actually swim. It's like a public pool. It looks very like oppressive. <laughs> yeah. And there was this insane super swell. We were supposed to shoot there for three days or something like that. And these waves came in and just washed the set away. Oh, and really? They would have killed anyone in there. And so we had to rebuild it in a parking lot <laughs> in Prague yeah. and make it work. So take it away, Chris, and explain. This, this was a disaster. Yeah. So all of the coverage on Jared was in the parking lot. Her coverage we did up higher when we were in La Gomera from the pool. So when we're looking back towards the pylons in that the water. That was real. Those are real. Just not near the water. Yeah. And then if you really look at the sequence, you can see we framed out the top of the pool there. And we had water cannons, so that's all practical. And we were really judicious about where you actually see things and where you don't see things. But a lot of the wide shots, so that, that's parking lot and, and plate. plates from the real thing wow. all combined. So we shot some drone footage, but some of it's comp, but a lot of it was uh, digi doubles. She's not actually walking there. The, the Harry's not in the pool. It's just. Well, some of them are digi. Is it all digi? All digi's in this shot. Yeah. That's all digi. Wow. Okay, fine. I love this visual of you guys putting Harry Seldon in a, like a bathtub in a parking lot. Going, all right, <laughs> imagine you're on a planet. Oh, yeah, no. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, 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 he, and he was game, man. I, I, I mean, but that was not fun, for sure. Yeah. The one thing that still bothers me about that is that uh, we didn't wait down the pillars in the water, though. So yeah, you can see the little pylons moving. They're still moving, so. right? That's one of the giveaways there. I know. And, and we were like, should we freeze these? And, and, but it was too late in the game, and we were like, we had to let it go. So hopefully the acting takes care of that, and not many people notice until they watch the show. Yeah, now yeah, everybody yeah. gets to know. Now everybody will know. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of stuff that we do like that where, you know, hopefully the content is, is going to help hide some of the, uh, you know, the filmmaking follies that we run into with this stuff. But well, that's one of the most fascinating things about making films is these, because it's all illusions, right? It's all, yes. it's all stage tricks. Like, he's not actually crying. He's acting like he's crying, yes. you know? It's these stories of like, hey, we had this problem. We have to solve it. And we're going to do it in a way ideally you can't notice, but it's still right in front of you. The audience doesn't it. know what they don't know. And just off camera, <laughs> you know, our, uh, you know, it was a hot day in Prague and we were literally in a parking lot, <laughs> you know, just hanging out. You know, nothing says space show like spaceships and planets and, and then alien creatures. Mm -hmm. And we had a Bishop's Claw, which is a predator on Terminus in season one. And I wanted to show the progression of time and to show that they had domesticated some of these animals. So I said, we're not just going to put four shots of Becky in every episode. We're going to have like three episodes where she's in a lot and you get to know her and she's got personality, and then in other episodes you won't see her at all or you just hear her. But the hardest part of this was the shots where Izzy, who plays Constant, is riding Becky. Whoa, Becky! What's up? You know, like everything on this show, we don't have enough money to do the, like, the Jungle Book version of uh, an animatronic uh, buck and all that stuff. So we took a horse rig that the guys had from, I think it was Game of Game Thrones. Of Thrones. A hydraulic horse buck that when an actor's on it, it kind of goes up and down and it mimics the movement of a horse. But because Becky's like a cat, we ended up it turning needs, it. Mm. Yeah, we turn it sideways. Oh, smart. So it rolls from side to side. <laughs> But I love I love the water interaction here. Yeah, we, and, yeah. the guy, uh, the stuntman Chris, that played Becky for us the whole season, big. I think he was like 250 pounds or whatever. But he was a uh, stuntman. We were like, oh, I don't know if this is the right casting for for Becky. But he came in and he nailed it. But yeah, in every shot where you see Becky, we have a stuntman with a foam head. Yeah, stuntman <laughs> with a foam head in a in a gray gimp suit, and he's yeah. he's acting so that the actors have something to react to. So th there's a lot of trust from the actors because they've they've seen what we've done so far. Yeah. I mean, season one was a little hairy. Everybody was like, oh, is what, this, you, how, what is this going to look like? What, 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 what yeah. are you guys doing? Scotty and Dan Apple were like, I hope you guys know what you're doing. <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, season one came out. Now everybody's just like, oh, you guys are the, the guys doing it all. It's okay. Yeah. We, That's we know. Be nice. Yeah, it is. It's, yeah. it's good to have <laughs> that kind of trust, especially from the uh, quote unquote talent. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Season two was in that regard a lot easier because they're like, okay, just go with us. Go with us. They're like, all right, all right, we'll go with you. Do you guys feel like you still need to prove yourselves? Sure. Uh, yeah. Yeah. All the time. I mean, 
every day, you know, on set, like I'll give myself a grade. But yeah, we're, we're very hard on ourselves. It was something Dennis Berardi told me, in visual effects, you're only as good as your worst shot. So no matter what, you know, we can have all this amazing visual effects, but then if one shot is just garbage, everybody will That's go. That's kind of how I feel about the whole show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just in visual effects. I yeah. mean, it, but the, that, the yeah. shots and the moments where we fall down, I'm like, yeah, I feel like we failed. Hmm. Yeah. You said to me, it's, it's, you know, what was it? This is like acrylic painting where it's not oil painting. You know, we, we let things dry a little bit faster because we're moving a lot faster. Yeah, it's not TV. watercolor. You know, it's more involved in watercolor, but it's, it, we don't have the chiaroscuro of oil painting. <laughs> so it's acrylic painting Yeah, is, is what we're nice. doing. That's, that's a great analogy. <laughs> I mean, Foundation is my favorite sci-fi series of recent history. One of my favorite sci-fi series of all time. When somebody's going to tell me a sci-fi story, I'm expecting the story to have something in it that can only make that story exist because some rule of the universe needed to be changed. Yeah, yeah gonna, that makes yeah. sense. If you're gonna yeah. tell me a story that you could tell me in a normal place, if right. it's not sci-fi, what's well, the point of sci-fi? Right, right. It can only be told in sci-fi. So we've got time dilation. Clones. And clones and AI entities and things like that. And Monoliths. Black, black holes, exactly. <laughs> and you guys, obviously, you have your human elements of the story, which could exist across any story, but then you have actual scenes with actual problems that only exist because you built a world that these problems can only exist. Well, some crazy ass sh happens in season two. I will say that. <laughs> I would ask, like, hey, where can we see more of your work? I feel like it's pretty obvious <laughs> for this episode. You can check out Foundation season two playing right now on Apple TV. Also, after every single episode, David uploads behind the scenes to his website, which is super cool. So go check that out. Well, thank you so much for joining us, guys. Yeah, really appreciate it. It's been a pleasure. It. It's been an absolute yeah, it's pleasure. Been a pleasure. So every once in a while, we get amazing guests on the couch, as you can see. Uh, who knows who the next one will be? We'll have to subscribe to find out.